Hello, this is Perry Mank, and it is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020, at about 4 p.m. All right, so this is for the people video, and this is uh, where I give updates and current developments as to what, you know, and how the government terrorists are still affecting me. And and I also give the homework assignment. So I still don't have gas for hot water or for the stovetop burners. Uh, my phone still doesn't work, and so it, it keeps indicating that it's not activated. I... Um, never got a proper response back from PG&E, the Pacific Gas and Electric, and I'm still being charged, you know, quite a bit of money for services that are not related to me. And for those of you who, who have watched my updates before, they are charging me for like 300 kilowatts more than what I had been using. And this new bill that I just was charged, it posted on my account, was about $95 and some odd cents. And I'm not sure what period that was, but I'm not even using the gas here. It's been out for over a month now. All right, so I still didn't receive a response from Tony LaRusse's Animal Rescue Foundation, the Emergency Medical Fund. So he still needs to be checked. <clears throat> and I still can't get medical care. And I'm specifically speaking about uh, current prescription eyeglasses. Then I'm also still being harassed when I go out. So it's either going to be here or it's on the bus or it's 24-7. And today I had to take the bicycle out to get water and some grocery items. And the, the game that they play, it's a very wicked, vile game. It, they're severely mentally ill, severely mentally ill. And what these people, people do is they concoct this, this fantasy in their head that is specifically directed at the target. And so we're talking about me. They, they're doing this to many, many people. They do this all day long. These are people in law enforcement. So I went to uh, Walgreens first and a Martinez police officer drove by. So that was the indication there that they're still targeting me. They're still tracking me. I mean, I know this because I've lived here since 90, 1995, and so you will notice, you know, if you've been somewhere for a certain amount of time, you're going to recognize, well, this was not happening during those years, but now all of a sudden, after I filed the lawsuit, now it just keeps progressing, and it's perpetual, and it just keeps going on and on and on. And so our government is run by severely mentally deranged people. So they actually will get other people to perpetrate these dirty deeds directed on the person that they don't like. And so you'll notice that at different places that you go to. So I, after Walgreens, I went to... I went to Safeway, and Safeway is a big target for them because uh, Catholics are systematically and systemically eliminating anything that has to do with the history of the United States, and that is wholesome Protestants. These were the original Reformed Protestants that came to this country, and even before uh, people had uh, also already been here from Europe who were fleeing the the destruction and the pillaging and the raping and the killing that was going on in Europe that was um, directed at 
the French Huguenots and the Calvinists and, and the Lutherans. And these were Catholics that were just annihilating them, torturing them, terrorizing them, annihilating them, and really attacking their private parts, their genitalia, you know, their their you know, their body, physically attacking their body, raping them, and then and then torturing and killing them. So I went to Safeway and I picked up some items and they premeditate this. So when I went to check out, I had more than 15 items, but the only cashier that was open only had um, allowed 15 items or less. So there was a woman out there and I said, oh, I have more than 15 items. And she said, oh no, you can go in that line. Okay, so that was intentional. That's to make me look like, you know, I'm one of these people that could care less about the signage that says it's for 15 items or less because somebody else comes in line behind me and they're not going to know the conversation that I had with that person that told me that it was okay to be there. So sure enough, somebody comes up behind me with just two items and I said, oh, go ahead before me because they didn't want to open up another aisle and I meant another cashier. And then somebody else came up behind me and she had a whole lot of, uh, um, you know, she was holding a lot of items and they opened up another cashier. So then the the cashier is a, a black male this time and he's talking with the bagger and I told the bagger to just put the items in the cart because I have to pack it outside because I took the bicycle. And I paid for the items and then when I got outside I was disinfecting all of the items so that I could pack it into the saddlebag. And what do you know, the bread bag was torn. And this is something that they do. They want to make it look like the person that they're targeting is the one that's causing the problems. Well, I didn't cause it. When I picked up the items, they I was picking up, I was looking at them and the bag wasn't torn. Uh, I also picked up another uh, item from the refrigerator section that was a um, like this plant-based faux crumble meat, you know, it's faux meat, and that too was also damaged. The box was torn, but it wasn't torn when I picked it up. And so they had been doing this before to the water and poking the plastic water gallon jug, and, and then it would start leaking. So when I was out, when I discovered it, I was outside and I noticed that one of the Safeway employees was walking in and I said, oh, excuse me, can you get me another bread because the, the bag is torn on here. And to make a long story short, he comes back and he says, we only have these breads. Well, I don't remember what other bread, if there was another bread behind the bread that I picked, the specific one that I picked. And so I just told him, well, I'll you know, the other one I would like is this one. So he went and got that one. It's all intentional. It's to make the person that they don't like look bad, like they're a problem, like they caused it, um, to make it look like they're, uh, they're the one that is destructive. And it's because they're destructive so then when you look at, so what I wanted to talk about today about the homework assignment, because that, that was the last on my list for how, you know, what, what is the development. What I wanted to talk about for the homework assignment is the terrorist operations, okay? How, how does this work? And I've given different examples specific to other aspects of their terrorist operations. And it's very difficult to identify and the reason that I'm creating and informing people about this on this forum and that's why I call it for the people is because it is very difficult to understand 
So the terrorist operations, though, work where they get to live. They get to go live their life. They go to their home and nobody's bothering them. They go shopping, nobody's bothering them. They drive their car, nobody's bothering them. They go to the bank, nobody's bothering them. They go to, you know, uh, it could be all types of things. They go to get some other service from the government, it's just fine, no problem there. So they target, though, the people that they don't like. And I've talked about who who's on that list, okay? And the people that are on the list, and, and I did talk about this in uh, videos before I started this For the People video. It could be your, you know, the car that you drive. It could be your, the job that you have. It could be the, the, it could be your gender. It could be your, you know, the color of your, um, you know, shoes. It could be your hairstyle. It could be, you know, your personality type. It could, it, very high on the list is your religion. And so these people are taught to scope you out. As soon as you get to the airport, they are scoping you out. And what they are doing is they're uh, hunting and they want to see who can we steal from how much money is in their bank account? We're going to get those people because we want their money. And, and I wasn't going to mention this particular uh, family, but one of the high profile cases here that was really covered up was the prince and princess of Tonga. And they are Protestants. And they came to the Bay Area and they were targeted as soon as they got here. They were targeted by these Catholics and the Catholics recruits. These are cruel Catholic mowers. They are doing this all day long. They are not using tax dollars to protect us. They are using tax dollars to hunt and carry out some very wicked and dangerous dirty deeds. This is how their terrorist operations work. We have no protection. And however, I know that there are people putting themselves on the line to figure this out because it is very clandestine. It is very diabolical. It is very secretive. And that's why they call it secret society. People who have known about the Catholic and their regime know that it is very secret society. And that is how they go undetected or, un, you know, how they go under the wire. And so I broke the code because they do reinvent it. Like I said, before the term could be die, now it's going to be die, die, die. And so the code words change. Some of the code words are spoil and tease. And I noticed that on these Jewish programs on YouTube, they are using those words without realizing that they were influenced to use those words and they're really being set up because English is their second language. So I noticed that on uh, two separate uh, Jewish programs who are, you know, protecting Jews and, and one of them is for, it's not Jews for Jesus, but it reminds me of Jews for Jesus where they are, uh, they're Christians, but they're Jewish. And they don't realize the the MO that they the Catholics changed the definition of words so that they get the result that they want and it's annihilation and it is the Catholics that have in their canon law 
that they are anti-Semites and that the goal is to eliminate Jews and they are setting up Jewish people all over all over and that's why I'm doing this for the people because the homework assignment on August 28th 2020 I explain once you understand once you are able to identify this cruel Catholic MO you will then know how to identify prominent white men who have been tortured, terrorized, and destroyed by these Catholics who go undetected because they recruit people of all colors. And these people just join in just like that. So the, the one aspect that people don't realize is they use a very manipulative method to get other people to join with them in their dirty deed that is specifically directed at a target. And so they wouldn't realize it because they don't announce themselves. They don't have a badge on their shoulder that represents the terrorist regime that they are. So let's say if they did call themselves Nazis again, you would see a Nazi symbol on their arm. You don't see that. What you see is a Contra Costa County Sheriff Deputy badge, or you see a Walnut Creek Police you know, Department badge, or you see a Martinez Police badge, or you see a you know, a district attorney coming around and just showing the badge, flashing it. Or I've even seen where they walk around and you could see their gun, you know. And I wondered why the feds were going along with this. Well, they're in the feds. They're in the federal government. So, like I say, they get to go shopping. They get to buy things. They get to have a business. They can run a business. But if you go there and you're a target, they're going to, it's a trap for you. It's going to be a trap for you. But their friends and family can get service there and everything will be just fine. Their car will be repaired properly. They can go driving. They could be, have a reliable vehicle and they paid or maybe they did bartering and everything's just fine. You come along, you're on that list and right away they're going to come up with some kind of scheme, a scam, and you're not going to know it. And one of the worst parts about this is they're so saturated in the legal system that their motto is, if you didn't figure it out before you went there, then that's your own fault. Okay, this is how they operate. This is what their ideal is and they teach it in the Catholic schools and then they infiltrate, saturate, and wiggle into all these other places and they start influencing other people to do this. And they join in because, as I said, they do not announce themselves. They do not claim responsibility. They do not say, we are the uh, Catholic Hamas, you know, we're the uh, Catholic you know, um, what's another one that they would call um, the jihad? We're the Catholic jihad. They don't say, we are the Catholic, um, you know, um, I, I just can't think. We're the Catholic guerrillas. They don't say this. They don't say, we're the Catholic mafiosos. They don't say anything like that at all. But what they do say is if they do go to a business and it's somebody that they're not familiar with, they'll say, oh, I'm a judge, you know, and, and, and like magic, they get what they want. Okay. But then the target comes in and they've already convinced that new person, you need to do what I'm telling you to do. And this is what you're going to do to that person who's going to come in here on such and such a date. Because most people are doing things habitually because you have a work schedule. And so after work on uh, your payday, you go down to the bank. And so they know this. 
So when you go down there, they're going to go, okay, here, here he or she comes. Now this is what you need to do. They know that they're going to be there because they've been watching them. They're tracking them. And this happens with if they want to harm you um, to get money out of you in a medical situation. So as I talked about the prince and princess from Tonga, they knew that they were here. And what, were, what was the goal? To get them in the hospital. But the accident went completely awry and the, um, the accident caused them to be dead instead. And probably in their heads, they were going, oh, well, you know, hey, uh, another one bites the dust. You know, this is how they how they behave behind the scenes. And, and it's so disturbing. It, it's just evil, pure evil, sinister. And the Jews that go along with this, some go to a Catholic school like Dianne Feinstein, Senator Dianne Feinstein. She went to Sacred Heart. In her head, you know, she's just practicing what she learned in the Catholic school and it's very evil it's sinister and then they turn to Balaam and that's devil worshiping and you could see that by their behavior very corrupt very diabolical very evil very destructive and, and homicidal all right so that that's my um, homework assignment today um, continue with the other cases that I brought up about about Dr. Stinson and and the Morrissey family with Dr. Kawai and also the CHP Youngstrom and and Lacey and and Carlton. So now I spoke about uh, the Tongan couple, the prince and princess from Tonga and that that's another case right there so all right well thank you for listening thank you for spreading the word please we must stop this terrorist organization it is illegal uh, they are um, constantly ramping up to get rid of the people that they don't like because they do not believe in your property rights they hate females they are female heterophobic and the government, the U.S. government, the Homeland Security is supposed to stop them. They are supposed to be put under. They are supposed to be taken to the mental hospital. They are supposed to be put in the loony bin. They used to call these psychiatric wards. All right. Thank you for listening. And it is 424 in the afternoon on Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. And signing off for now. Please, to the highly intelligent um, enforcer Puggy allies, winning needs help. And I would very much like to have new eyeglasses. All right, thank you very much. Signing off.